What's good? It's your boy Big Mike, aka B Mike Rob. Welcome back to another segment of the Yummy Lounge, where cultivation, lifestyle, and entertainment all come together as one. Speaking about the lifestyle, we got a great guest here for you today. She goes by the name of Nawe. Hey. Nawe, let please let everybody know who you are and where you're from. My name is Nawe. I'm from San Francisco and Sacramento, California, and my family's from Liberia, West Africa. Liberia, wow. Like um, earlier we were talking offset and we were uh -huh. talking about how I go to Lagos. So it's like, um, Liberia, how, I mean, how is it out there? Um, you know, Liberia, it is a third world country. We're striving for um, better um, opportunities, for better presidency, better political um, okay. governance over our country, better opportunities for our people. So we go back and we give back with different programs and really try to empower there our go. family and other individuals there. That's what it's always about, you know, empowering others, inspiring others, as well as giving them, you know, opportunities to, to move to the next level in their lives, you know? So um, what brings you here to the Yummy Lounge? Because I mean, we got so much stuff going on and uh, to see you here is, I, I know what brings her here, but she's gonna let you guys know. You know, the good old tree, the 420, the cannabis. Cannabis brings me here. I'm a cannabis entrepreneur. My company name is Equilibrium. And I also have a consulting company, so I do two things. And I um, specialize in distribution and non-store front delivery, as well as having a cannabis consulting company where we provide services for other cannabis equity entrepreneurs getting into the industry. Through our cannabis company, we have different products. We specialize in beauty and wellness. And coming soon, we have a few um, pre-rolls and different products coming and rolling out. Wow. So I, she does a lot. You know? So when, when it comes to like the cannabis industry, because there's a lot of people that they try to get into the cannabis industry yeah. and they really don't even know how the steps. Can you kind of give us some of the steps of what it takes to even get started, to even meet someone like you? Yeah. You know, because you're you're a cannabis entrepreneur and there's there's got to be some kind of steps that it takes to get into this. Yeah, I think it's putting yourself out there. Um, it's not for someone that's faint of the heart. I mm -hmm. always like to say that. Um, I also forgot to mention I'm a cannabis social equity entrepreneur. It's all, so it's all about finding your niche got and it. finding what's going to work for you. So taking some of your other talents that you have been good at at other jobs and then putting it towards cannabis. So uh, um, it comes yeah. with having some money, some financing. Oh yeah, some. I think you gotta have a lot of money, but now <laughs> you know. I just want to put that out. That's there, right. Know. That's right. That hey, <laughs> that you have to invest into your business. You have to invest in yourselves. You definitely have to make sure that your I call it credentials are correct. Correct. You know, so that's what's good about a lot of the people out there, especially as yourself, that's helping other people in the cannabis industry. That's you know uh, helping them get started and stuff like that. Because some. They just, they don't really don't know. They just think, oh, it's a big money maker. I can get out there and make money. So can you kind of elaborate a little bit about when it comes to, um, as far as you're like, you're so you're more so like a consultant in essence? So I'm a consultant as well as a cannabis entrepreneur. So like you, you sure you African, cause you might be Jamaican. Ah, not Jamaican. You know. <laughs> we African. all in one, we all in one anyway. But, <laughs> right, we all came but over there. They got all these jobs. <laughs> you know, they took us from everywhere and brought us over here that, and hey, took I us know back. That's right. so, I know that's right, I know that's right. You know, I, I started the consulting during the process when you mentioned that it's hard getting in the cannabis of course, industry. Of course, of course, of course. So being an equity entrepreneur and a cannabis entrepreneur, what I did um, encounter some barriers along the way. So during um, I was encountering those barriers, I had to find a way to still make income Got and it. to be able to finance my dreams and my goals. So through that, I went to my skills of marketing. Okay. I had a marketing um, company that I ran in Atlanta where I would do um, events and okay. projects for different companies and different partnerships. I also did a program in Liberia. So I took those skills that I already had wow. and I applied them to the consulting. Why I was 
while I'm currently still going through the process of construction and opening up the distribution and the non-store front delivery, I was able to assist and provide services for equity entrepreneurs. Because like I said, we always need some cheddar. That's right, so. that's right. <laughs> and that's, that's a lot of information out there because a lot of people don't know that you know when it comes to the distribution part about it how can you kind of elaborate a little bit about the distribution yeah so the distribution i was new to that i'm a um a lady that likes to stay with um the knowledge that i have like mm -hmm. i said i was a i was a marketing and retail chick got it, i like got to it. say mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. so i'm um, distribution i learn a lot from my partners but the distribution side the products need to get out there. The of products course. from cultivators need to get to the non-store front deliveries and also to the store front de deliveries. Okay. And being an equity entrepreneur in the state of California and now that equity is branching off to different states, I have a lot of individuals that I known prior calling to get into the market. Um, and you can get into the market through white labeling your products and okay. starting a brand of pre-roll and flour. Wow. And that's a lot of information. Hey, the game is to be sold, not told. But uh, you're getting it here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. So if you weren't into the uh, cannabis or the uh -huh. cultivation and stuff like that, what would you, what do you think you'd be doing? Um, I would be an executive. I was. You're at, already that. <laughs> I'd be. I would be an executive for a nonprofit or for okay. a for-profit company. I was um, working as a director at the Greater Sacramento Urban League prior to I'm um, branching off and being an okay. entrepreneur and starting my marketing, or I'll be giving back, working for United Nations yeah. or um, something overseas. Okay, she got it all together. So uh, with, with cannabis being about health and wellness now, can you kind of um, explain to a lot of people out there how you work into the health and wellness with the cannabis? Yeah, so my company, Equilibrium, we have four pillars. One of our pillars are beauty and wellness. We have a, lot, um, we have a lip gloss okay. that I'm currently oh, wow. wearing now that's okay. shiny. So that's one of our beauty products, but our wellness- But wait, before you go there, does it make you high? It doesn't make you high. It's because I, I'll tell you right now, I'll be, Maybe they think I'm worse than LL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead, a CBD. Yes, okay. CBD infused so it can go to market without having to go through testing and um, other steps. So we can wow. go to market and it could be federally regulated. Oh, wow, so yeah. as far as the CBD, because that helps a lot of, yeah, that helps a lot of the joints and stuff like that. Do you guys do any like, um, is it like the lotions or anything 2022. like that? 2022, we'll be coming out with the body butter. And okay, the okay, yeah. well there it is. And That's... that covers our wellness side and also educating individuals on some of the stigmas mm -hmm. that individuals have about cannabis. And you know, a lot of people have stigmas on edibles or um, just different cannabis products. I think it's good to raise awareness first and then go to the education steps. So that through equity is how we correlate the cannabis and the wellness piece together. Wow. Man, I'm loving this interview right here because uh, I might be giving me some lip gloss, y'all. Ah. I might come back with some lip balm <laughs> after this. <laughs> so, can you give can you give uh, them out there your your social media, your Instagram and stuff like that? How to get a hold of your yeah. who you who you are? Yeah, sure. So our um, like I said, my company organization name is Equilibrium. It's Equilibrium with the A A E Q U I L I B R I U M underscore Life. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on um, social media, I mean on Instagram, you can also find us on our website, equilibriumlife.com. My name is Nawe, Nawe T underscore, if that's easier, you can go there and then follow me. And stay tuned for what we have in store with our great equity, social equity, rolling out throughout the state, some great programs and great products. Okay, okay. And with that being said, give us two things that you would, t like a message for the people out there that's in the cannabis world right now. Um, stick to it. Um, make sure you do something in your industry, in the cannabis industry, and learn. Read an article every day, and um, stay stay up to date on your compliance and what's going on in your current district and local legislation. There it is. Now we put it all in one. So you guys make sure that you guys make sure you go follow them as well as check her out because she can help you in this cannabis industry. And with that being said, hey, you already know three things with me. God, family, education, you'll be successful no matter what you do. Hey, Yummy Lounge, where cultivation, lifestyle, and entertainment all come together in one. Thank you, Nawe, for coming through. We appreciate you so much. All right. Hey, Thanks. we're going to go ahead and take it out to Cyrus. He's out there cooking something. He says some greens and turkey. I, I don't know, but I'm smelling it, so let's go.
absolutely fantastic. What's happening, you guys? Hey, look, as you can see, I am not in the kitchen because I'm just done with the kitchen. But I did cook today, and uh, it was fantastic. What I made today was uh, it was a fettuccine alfredo with uh, smoked turkey uh, and uh, with uh, collard greens. It was completely off the hook. You will love it, man. I swear to you. But man, I, you know, after, you know, after a while, you kind of get tired of being in the kitchen. <laughs> Being in the kitchen, I feel like a damn slave, but you know what, that's fine. But uh, I got my twisty bread going on. I'll tell you something, when you come back, I'll tell you all about it. But right now, I'm gonna send you right back to Big Mike. Big Mike, what's up, man? What's going on? What's happening, baby? See you later. What's good, it's your boy Big Mike, AKA B Mike Rob. It's definitely going down over here at the Yummy Lounge. You already know where cultivation, lifestyle, and entertainment all come together as one. Hey, we got my boy Jason in the building. Jason, let everybody know who you are and what you do, buddy. Yeah, so my name is Jason Gilbert. I'm with Medicus Industries, and we have a manufacturing facility and distribution. There it is. Okay, so as far as uh, getting into the cannabis industry, what did, what did it take to get into that? Uh, I was kind of in the cannabis industry before. Okay, yeah. And then uh, it, it, it took partnering up with somebody that could afford to finance the, the project. Yeah, so. and see, and that's, that's another thing that we tr try to tell a lot of people that it's that financing. Yeah. And finance, it takes a lot of money to get into this industry, you know, so it's like to be able to continue right. to grow as, as an, an entrepreneur, not only an entrepreneur, but as an owner of it in the business. Right. And actually, my... Uh, my co-founder. Okay. It happens to be uh, my parents' best friend. Okay. Okay. And um, he's definitely stood behind us in a big way, pushing us forward. And it's a uh, it's a lift. Yes, it is definitely. So, as far as um, manufacture, can you kind of elaborate on to the people out there as uh, what kind of manufacturing that you do, other than just on, with the cannabis itself? Yeah, absolutely. The manufacturing that we do is all a proprietary ethanol extraction. We do not do any butane extraction. Okay, okay. Um, Can you elaborate on ethanol as well? Yeah, yeah, I will. Okay. Uh, our, our process is uh, no butane, no color, color remediation. Okay. And the reason that we uh, take that approach is for basically medicinal reasons. Okay. So um, cryogenic ethanol extraction, equipment that I designed I spec'd out. Wow. I had built to my specifications. I don't believe that there is anybody in the cannabis industry that's doing what we're doing at this point. And that um, separates you. Yeah, I really feel that it does. Yeah, and of course. Our, our medicinal mindset is, it's a little bit of a lift because mm. it's new. It's, uh, it's kind of going against the grain of a lot of other manufacturers right now. Got it. So... We have a lot of competition that is not like what we do. Okay. So got it, got a it. lot of times we end up finding ourselves in a store and we say, hey, look, this is a product that nobody else has. And they go, well, it doesn't look like this product. Got it. It's not supposed to look like that product. That's, that's why it's your product. <laughs> it's not that product. <laughs> <laughs> Those are apples. We sell These oranges. Are, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way, I like you. The way you put that together. So as far as the um, cultivation of it, do you, do you guys grow it as well? Or are you guys just more so manufacturing trim and stuff like that? So uh, I did grow okay. for several years. Got it. Um, we do not grow at this point. Got it. We have uh, contracts with local growers. Okay. And we source that material based off of our knowledge. Got it. In in the growing environment. Um, so we're very particular about the material that we get. Got it, got it. Okay, so yeah, so you calm right through it. Make sure that you, um, like you said, you outsource that part. 
we do outsource that part okay. with very very stringent uh, criteria okay so okay so with that being said do you do you test any of your own stuff how do you how do you guys go about it? do you send it out to labs to get it tested or? All, all of our stuff is tested through cal ag labs okay so it's it's all to specifications yep yeah so okay that's that's awesome because again lots of people out there don't know this type of information so the information right. you're giving them is very 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 uh, useful to them yeah a lot of the products that we make we do testing on the front side we do testing in the middle and testing on the back side wow all so, the way from a to z yep robert is uh very very much an intricate part of what we do okay okay so if let me ask you this question if you weren't doing if you weren't in the cannabis industry what do you think you'd be doing well, I can tell you I left the automotive industry after being involved in European automotive for 38 years. Okay. So that's that's what I was doing before. So you did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the that's where the um, the entrepreneurship of building things and, oh, yeah. and, and yeah. creating things come together. Yeah, definitely. My parents and I owned a European automotive shop in Auburn for okay. 38 years. And Boy, that's got to be really difficult because you said European. So European is the some of the hardest cars to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you guys are definitely uh, uh, mechanically inclined. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what's and, up. And the equipment that we use shows that. I mean, it comes out in the way the way that our stuff is designed. Okay. Inside so, our facility. And it's just, you're, you're, as far as the design, is it more so like you engineer it as well? I, I, yes, I engineered everything. <laughs> you did, wow. Yeah. You just... <laughs> Hey, a man of all trades when it comes to that. So, so tell me a little bit about um, how the company started. So the uh, the company started with um, other than the vision and the dream. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get uh, I don't want to get too personal. Right, exactly, I understand um, that. I get it. But let's just say that uh, that our my partner, our co-founder. Mm -hmm. um, he did have some need for medicinal oh, okay. cannabis. Medicinal cannabis. Okay. And uh, came to me, and I was able to help him out. He's like a father figure to me. Of course, of course. My parents' best friend. Right? Okay, so, there it is. Uh, came to me, had a need. I gave him what I had. Yeah. And it helped him. Wow. And the light bulb went off for him. He says, "Man." You know, this Why don't whole, we get this, this whole platform is going legal now. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, we could probably do something together. I thought, well, that's great because I'm just a poor farmer. Hey, hey. you knew how to. <laughs> I'm telling you this much: you were, you were, you were. A, you can say you're a poor farmer, but in mechanically being inclined, as well as you were rich in those kind of ways. Right. So. Yeah. So it took us. Uh, it took us about three years to from conception to opening the operation, yeah. which my brother and I did. I mean, we spec'd out all the TI, we did all the build out for good, good, good. our yeah. entire facility. Um, went through engineering. I went through all the building department process. Um, and we, we built the whole thing. Wow, so, ground up and that's, that's what it takes sometimes. That's what makes you appreciate it that much more. Well, I'll tell you, man, it was, it was a lot of work. And, Trying, oh yeah, trying to explain. It's continuously a lot of work. Well, and, and even even when you you start looking at certain jurisdictions, we're up in Nevada City. The okay. uh, oh, yeah, building department right. up there, the concept that we were laying forward was like nothing that they had ever seen before. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how much oh, red tape we had to cut through. I was going to say you guys had to get through a lot of red tape. I mean, to the point of like literally researching all of the building codes, all of the fire codes, and literally putting that in front of them and showing them where, how we can do this and wow. per their codes. Yeah, they could work per their they codes. didn't understand what they were looking at. So now, but now they put, with that, they put a, a platform and a floor plan together to the fact that now anybody else that come to them, you guys helped them with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And they'd actually had called me several times during the during our process because they were also working with other manufacturers that were trying to get on board and they're calling me and they're asking me questions like hey you know Jason does do you think that this would work because you know they think that this is going to work I'm going well you saw what I, we did exactly and, <laughs> and don't call me about no competition <laughs> <Right>? exactly 
<laughs> so, so, so we appreciate you coming by, man. Can you let everybody know how to get a hold of you guys? You can email Jason at BLK, the number four, EST at gmail.com. You have technical questions, you probably want to direct them to the Jason email. Hey, man, we appreciate you coming by, man. And before we leave, give me two things that you would tell anybody in the cannabis industry that, that is, that's give them a message. Somebody who's coming into the cannabis industry? Yeah, somebody's coming into the cannabis industry. Well, hold on, you're going for a ride. There it is, that's one. <laughs> uh, perseverance, tenacity, pays off. There it is, that's what it is. And there you have it, man. We're over here, hey, you already know, it's the Emmy Lounge. The Yummy Lounge is definitely in the building. Where cultivation, lifestyle, and entertainment come together. Hey, he was very entertaining, and he <laughs> he definitely he definitely put it all together for you guys. That's what it is. Let's go ahead and send it back out to Cyrus. Cyrus, what you cooking out there? Let's go. from Yummy Lifestyle. As a part of Yummy Lifestyle, we believe in giving back to our communities. I would like to present you with an opportunity to make some extra cash. All you need to do is like the post, comment, and tag someone. Follow Yummy Lifestyle, purchase a bag of Yummy Corn at gotyummycorn.com, and lastly, invite your family, your friends, and your social media followers. You will earn 40% of all sales that you generate. And that's not all. Whichever Yummy affiliate sells the most Yummy corn will earn 50% of all sales you generate. So what are you waiting for? Time is money. Let's start making yours. Don't forget, our THC products will be in dispensary soon. Until then, stay Yummy. Yeah, I'm not going, <laughs> I'm not going back to the kitchen. No, not today, you know, uh, it's just a little too much, but my time in the kitchen was good, man. Let me tell you, man, you got the braised collard greens, your fettuccine with the smoked turkey, man, let me tell you something. But not only that, I also incorporated um, uh, some uh, sauteed shrimp, which was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I put some uh, some uh, garlic twisty bread in there. And it's, you know, it's one of those things that is so easy to do, man. It's so easy to do. Okay, Armani's trying to talk to me right now. No, nigga, I am not going back to the kitchen. I am in the lounge, leave me the fuck alone. But anyway, I'm gonna continue on. You have to go to Osiris underscore, the underscore chef, if you wanna get the uh, recipes, <laughs> the recipes off the hook. But not only that, you wanna go to the yummylifestyle.com. Uh, to get everything, recipes, what we're doing, how it's you know working. Let me tell you something; it's working quite well. It's quite well. So first things first, you want to get your uh, your fettuccine. You want to you want to get your water together. You want to boil it, of course. Before you do that, you want to make sure that you put some some sea salt in there. And uh, now I'm not talking about regular table salt. No, I'm talking about sea salt. Put that in there because fettuccine actually has no flavor. Okay, so you want to put something in there. Throw some uh, some uh, sea salt in there. Uh, not only sea salt, throw a little olive oil in there because you don't want it to get a little. You know, you don't you don't want it to get to get you don't want it to stick. So once that comes to a boil, then you put your, you put your fettuccine in there. <laughs> you know, you know what fettuccine means? It means baby tongues. I did not know that. It's just the strangest thing. But anyway. <laughs> you boil your fettuccine, but you, what you want to do is you want it to be uh, al dente, okay? Al dente means like, you know, almost cooked. You don't want to cook it complete. And the only way you're really going to find that out is to, uh, while it's in boil, break off a piece, throw it against the wall. If it sticks, that's al dente. So now you got that together, fine, okay? Now it's time to move on. So what you want to do is you want to get your shallots, <laughs> get your smoked turkey chopped up, right? You want to make sure it's chopped up really, really well. Um, olive oil, minced garlic, uh, butter. Man, look, let me tell you something. 
these all these things come together, but it's all in succession. So, so the first thing is to get your olive oil and your butter in a saucepan and cook it. Let it let it uh, come to a, a nice, nice, a very, very nice kind of a braised uh, situation. Then throw your your heavy cream in there and allow that to thicken. Once you allow it to thicken, then you take your pasta that's pre-cooked, you throw it in there and just let it let it do its thing. And I'm telling you, this is completely outside of like um, uh, an idea as far as like, you know, most people, a lot of people, they like to put spinach in their, you know, their, their pasta and then their, and their fettuccine, but no, 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 we're going, Straight up black folks, man. I got greens up in there, collard greens, okay? <laughs> you wanna get, <laughs> you wanna get it? You wanna get all, everything? Uh, go to yummylifestyle.com or Osiris underscore, the underscore chef, all right? So back to you, Big Mike. See you in a minute. Yes, 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 we're back. Hey, I appreciate you, Cyrus. This is the Yummy Lounge, where cultivation, entertainment, and lifestyle all comes together. Speaking about entertainment, we got a great artist here today. He goes by the name of Andre. How you doing, Andre? How you doing, buddy? I'm wonderful. How about yourself? I'm good. Can you let everybody know who you are, where you're from, and what you do? Buddy? Yeah, I'm Andre Preston. Um, I'm living in the Bay, uh, down in El Sobrante right now. I am a visual and a performing artist. Um, I have a project called the Universal Funk Opera, which is based on a graphic novel series that I created called Welcome to the Universe. And uh, I'm a drummer, songwriter, singer, producer, and as I said before, visual artist. And, okay. Uh, yeah. That's what's up, man. So <clears throat> me being in the industry for about 27 years now, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to entertainment, you know, I'm always really keen on on who's who's out there and what's what's going on with the music nowadays. Mm -hmm. And um, can you elaborate a little bit what kind of music you do? Okay, so uh, I coined the phrase universal funk. Okay. okay. And I'm a funketeer from way back. Most I mean, definitely. I, my influences go all the way back past George Clinton. I was going to say, would it be George Clinton? But <laughs> oh, uh, definitely George. Prince, you know, folks like yes, that. Yes. But even beyond that, James Brown, The Meters. You know, and then okay. all those folks coming up in the 60s, Sly and the Family Stone, yeah. and whatnot. Um, but anyway, universal funk is deep-rooted funk that also has cosmic themes to it. Got it. Um, a lot of my music uh, is cosmically based, you know, the spa outer space theme, science mm -hmm. fiction, science fact. Um, the story is based on a true story. Okay. And um, it's a otherworldly connection, let's just put it that way. Got it. Uh, so the book is called Welcome to the Universe, Y-O-U, Universe. Universe, okay. Uh, there are three books, two of them are in print, um, published by Planet Woe Creations. Okay. Which is my own company, planetwoecreations.com. And um, what we do with the Universal Funk Opera, the band is called the Funky Heroes. The Funky Heroes are a band of aliens. Got it. Okay, you come out in costume, full costume. That's what I was gonna ask. I was gonna yeah. ask because why is it that when, when it comes to funk, and from back in the days, it was very cos cosmic. 
you know so it's like where where did that era come into play is it just like saying because it's a, a sound from out of this world or it's its own sound created where did where did the word not the word punk but where did yeah, the yeah. the elements of funk come into play I, well, because you seem like you're a punketeer uh, definitely, so you yeah. know so yeah. I just want to kind of get that because you, now funk. you're educating me not yeah. only them but me as well well in my opinion yes. I mean we were like at the, the height of the space age when funk really started to hit got it you know we've been to the moon mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know we were starting to explore more things beyond our own world so a lot of those things were into the movies TV shows and eventually music you know so understood um, in terms of funk, I mean, I just feel a cosmic connection anyway. I've always been interested in what's out there, astronomy, the stars, galaxies, things beyond here. Yeah, all these planets, yeah, gotta be yeah. something. Oh, gotta be somewhere <laughs> else. You know, we may have been somewhere else before. Yeah, got it. You know, so, um, that's my take on it. Got it, got it. Okay, so and, and so have you guys been like doing shows? Do you have your, your band and stuff like that? You guys do a lot of shows? So we're fairly new. Okay. And yes, we have done shows. Okay. Uh, most recently, we were uh, we did a virtual show. Uh, okay. It was supposed to be live, but they canceled the live portion based on some COVID issues uh, in Singapore. Okay. So oh, wow. Yeah, it was called yeah. the Yippie Kaye International Music Festival, and um, we still did our virtual show, uh, 45 minute show, okay. and uh, we videotaped it, and we have clips of that, uh, and you know, breaking down some YouTube videos to share and to put into our EPK as promo. Um, and uh, we've done a couple other festivals here. We did the uh, Afro Comic Con okay. um, in Emeryville at Expressions Art College. Um, and we've gone to schools and performed also. Wow, that's good. And, in the area. And I'm glad you brought up EPK because a lot of artists doesn't understand what an EPK is, you know. When they say, you know, they think it's just a regular press kit. No, it's an electronic, electronic press kit. Yeah, yeah so, um, so you guys have been doing a lot of different shows, and I see I see you brought something here today, right? Yes. Is well, that can can you kind of show that a little bit? Sure, sure. So this is where it all started. These are the books I have in print. Okay. Welcome to the universe, book one A. Got it. And book two. And book one A is called one A because it's a two sided book. Mm. Yeah, you read it from the beginning from to the middle. When you get to the middle, you have a conclusion. And oh, you, wow, so you flip it. Yeah, you turn it around and there's a whole other side. Oh, it, okay, so, and it just, and it starts, it's, it, it continues. Well, actually what it is, it's the same story, but from two different perspectives. Oh, wow, okay. And with the same conclusion, but each conclusion has a different result. So you have, so you have the other side, so. two different, so you have two different scenarios. But it's all in one. It's all, yeah, but it's all based on the same story. So okay. here, this side takes place from planet Earth. Okay. Okay. And then when you turn it around, you have it starts from planet Jupiter. Oh wow! And yeah, you that's have different, different characters, but it's the same exact story. Okay. Earth sees it one way. Jupiter sees it another way. Something happens in here that I'm not going to give away. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> so what is the ending, the result? <laughs> so the end result is an, It's to buy the book. <laughs> yeah, it, it's an ending that would make you think there's no book two. Mm. So it's the kind of thing like, wait, how can that be? You know, but book two picks right up from, from book 1A, but it takes you to another world. That's very, else. very unique. Yeah, very it's unique. a very and, interesting and you're, story. And you, you do all the art in it as well? All the art. Uh, the stories themselves, like I said, was based on a true story. Yeah. So the story came quickly, and each book has its own soundtrack. Okay, there it is. I was going to ask so, you, so the music, oh wow, look at that. Right, so here is the first soundtrack to book 1A, it's the Universal Funk Opera Act 1. Okay. And the band is the Funky Heroes, which is a band that I also created when I was in high school. For these cartoon aliens, and now we are in full costume, we come to life, we bring this whole See, story that's where, that's where I would love to see that. I think, I think we're gonna have to get a clip of that and play a clip of that for you guys. Sure, You sure know, thing. during this segment, so. Absolutely. So, if, tell me this, who is your, who inspired you? Right, give me two of your favorite artists. Uh, visually or, or visually? Uh, let's say visually. Visually? Yeah. Uh, Overton Lloyd. Okay. Who did some of the Parliament covers. Okay. Um, was one of my favorite ones, uh, and believe it or not, Norman Rockwell, who was a famous painter in early America, as they call it. What I liked about his painting was how he would capture realism 
you know, with light and shadow. You could tell that this, you know, it was a Sunday morning, one painting called Early Sunday Morning. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in New York City. Well, I was raised in New York City. And this painting was just a typical Sunday. It was a building, you know, like a block, barbershop on a Sunday morning. But the way he painted the shadow from the sun hitting the building and the way the windows looked, I'm like, man, that's, that looks real, you know, I like this artist. Yeah, you okay, know. okay. So Actually, it was, uh, I'm sorry, Edward Hopper was the name of the Edward guy. Edward Hopper, yeah. okay. Yeah. So you got two favorite artists? Yeah, at least. Yeah, there are more. There's just, okay, so yeah. now two of his favorite Edmund. funksters. Well, for sure, for sure, Jerome, I mean, um, uh, Overton Lloyd. Okay. Yeah, I like his cartoon style, you know. Okay, yeah, so. He did those albums for, uh, P-Funk in the 70s. So if you were in the middle of the ocean with those two on a boat and you had to throw one off, who would you throw off? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, if I had to be cruel about it, I would wish Edward Hopper a, a nice you know, fish dinner down below. There, there it is. You know, and he can do the aqua boogie because I know Overton Lloyd can handle it anyway. There it is, there it is. Can you give everybody your information on how to get those books? As oh, yeah. Well as your shout outs. So we are www.planetwocreations.com. Planet Woe, P L A N E T W O, okay. creations.com. And that's the website. You can go to The Funky Heroes at Facebook also and find me there. Um, Andre Preston on Instagram as well um, and also you can go to uh, the funky heroes Apple music Spotify look us up you the universal funk opera that's what's up man we appreciate you coming by man it's my pleasure we definitely want to we my definitely want to make sure that uh, people go out there and they support you guys because that's what it's all about man right on once again it. it's definitely going down over here you already know the yummy lounge hey Andre Preston is in the building, the Funketeer himself. Hey, make sure you go check out his book as well as check out all the music. I'm your boy Big Mike, AKA B Mike Rob. Lifestyle, cultivation, and entertainment all come together. Hey, stay yummy. Let's go! <laughs>
a quarter amount of some, you know, Sauvignon Blanc. Good wine, throw it in there. Let it saute for a minute. Turn the flame off, and this is what you have. This is what you get. That is absolutely succulent shrimp. Man. <laughs> Ooh. It's absolutely delicious. You want to get more information on this? Be sure to click and like and subscribe to yummylifestyle.com or go to Osiris underscore the underscore chef and you'll get all the game on what's going on. And I'm talking about meals that are really, really easy to prepare. I swear to you. This meal was under two hours. You know, you have the fettuccine that needs to be boiled. You have um, <clears throat> the collard greens. You have the collard greens. And the collard greens, if you have, you have to have a fresh curd, it would be good for you to have one because all of these things that I do, I, I prepare them simultaneously. So the, 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 uh, the greens are cooking on, in the pressure cooker, which takes up absolutely like, wait, 15 minutes? Is that warm? No, less than 15 minutes to cook. So everything comes together based on timing. So it's, it's really, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. But this, <laughs> mm. Mm. So, that's one other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and that would be this. And this is my twisty bread. So, <clears throat> earlier today I was shopping for uh, this meal, and I was like, we need to have something to, you know, to add to this meal. Bread, I was like, hmm, garlic bread, no. I can, I can put something together. So I, I'm walking through the aisle and I see um, Pillsbury. And it was like Pillsbury pizza dough. I was like, really? Oh, okay. So let's take that. So I took that, put it in the cart. And when I popped it open, it was like, okay, it was just dough. So it's just pizza dough. So basically what I did was I laid it out, spread it out with a pin. What do you, what do you call them? Why, why am I, why I remember? Why can't I remember? It's a pin, you know, it's like, what, you know the rolling, rolling pin. <laughs> rolling pin, roll, roll, roll. Take some cheese, spread the cheese over it. Now, keep in mind, this is a Pillsbury dough, so it comes out of a roll. You have to pop it, open it up, lay it out, pin roll it. So I'm pin rolling it, put the cheese on there, pin roll some more, right? Once you got that, <clears throat> you take it, flip it, make it like a sandwich, right? Once you have that, you pin roll it again and you cut it in slices. You'll see it because my man, my man got uh, footage of it. Cut it in slices, take the slices, <clears throat> twist them, throw them on the grate, put them in the oven for 400, whatever, you'll see. 400. <laughs> and it comes out excellent. Check this out. If you want to get all the game on it, because it'll be up, go to yummylifestyle.com, click like, and subscribe, please. Don't quit playing. Go to Osiris. Is there is there um green on my team? <laughs> Go to Osiris underscore the underscore chef. If you want to get the game on this, I love cooking. Cooking is absolutely fantastic. Let me tell you something. This bread right here make you want to slap your mama. Uh, so. <laughs> all you have to do is just be a little creative when it comes to your cooking. And, I, and it's all through store. Just okay, I can use this, I can use this. Have some fun with it. This bread is good. <clears throat> I swear to you. But listen, we're gonna go back to the yummy bar. So yummy! 
Sir Yummy, did you hear me where you at? Hey, Sir Yummy, I'm bringing it back to you. Go. Welcome back to the Yummy Lounge. I want to thank everyone out there for tuning in to our show. Much love for all the support that you give us. If you like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to our Instagram, Yummy Lifestyle. You know what I mean? That's where you need to go so you can learn more about our products and our people like these special people right here. who are happy to come on the Yummy Lounge. It's my man, Jason. What's up, baby? How you doing? All right, all right. You know, it was uh, it's really great to be able to meet you and have you on the show. Uh, a mutual friend of ours, Robert, he's uh, one a real good friend of mine that, and yours, right? So that's yep. how he hooked us up, you yep. know? And uh, I really appreciate that. He's an amazing guy. And, you know, he's got that racetrack to get ready to open up here pretty soon yeah, in, uh, in Woodland. It's pretty exciting. Right. Yeah, it is. I'm yeah. excited for him, and you know, it's going to be awesome. We're, we're going to be doing some events out there with him, too. Yeah, that'll we'll be do, fun. We're going to yeah. have a yummy day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then we have no now way. Yeah, no way, but now no way. way. But now way. way. Yeah. I like, but no way, but now way. Yeah. Cause, that's but that's, so that uh, derives from, you said, from Africa? Yeah, Liberia, West Africa. Oh, that's a beautiful name. Oh, you know, beautiful name, beautiful woman. Thank you. Yeah, that's like, you know how nowadays you gotta be careful when you say, you know, she's a beautiful woman because they got that, what's that thing called? Uh, some kind of movement, you can't oh, even yeah. say it. beautiful, um, you can't even tell no us. she or she, no, no, something. Something like, you know, uh, the Me Too thing. Yeah, Me Too. That's me, it, yeah. yeah. You can't yeah. even tell a woman she's beautiful no more. Right. <laughs> you know, when I grew up, that's what you do. That's what a gentleman yeah. does. A gentleman meets a beautiful woman, he's just not, not, it's not trying to, you know, get in her pants. He's just trying to tell her, like, you're a beautiful woman and compliment. I mean, I tell my mom that she's beautiful all the time. So she ain't even with the Me Too shit. <laughs> <laughs> Son, you're, you're, I'm, you're in trouble. I'm kind of, let me call him up right now. Who me you too. Beautiful? Yeah, who are you calling beautiful? Don't call me beautiful. And then, then we have my man Andre, which uh, we have, ooh, man, all right, we were actually kids, bro. We go all the way back. Yeah, we go back to. Shit, don't even tell all the stories. Man, we go all the way back to grade. Yeah, we were great, yeah. I remember when he first, well, he was a drummer, and he's still, of course, still a drummer. Now he's an amazing drummer. And uh, when we were kids, I used to go over there with him and his brother Tony, with Taj, because we all change our names. You know, when you get you're from California, it's a thing that the California guys do, you know. They want to change a little, little, add a little accent on it, you know. <laughs> you might be Herman, but now you're Herman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just but, got the old, I just kept No, you kept it. You didn't change. But you had a great name, Andre. I mean, like, how do you, you know, who wants to change Andre? You know, Andre is a good name. Especially, you know, when you're in school, they go by the alphabets, right? So they always call you first. He could get, you know, lunchtime, Andre. Oh, he's right. the first one in line. <laughs> I did butt dial first all the time, too, though. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, you, um, what's going on with you right now with your, with your music? Well, right now we uh, just completed our video shooting. Um, Funky Heroes is the name of my band. Right on. Uh, yeah, and what we do is called the Universal Funk Opera. Okay. Yeah, and that is a representation of our books. Uh, well, my book's actually Welcome to the Universe. Yeah, because you, you're you're a cartoonist. Can I say that? You can say that. Illustrator, I mean, illustrator yeah, more than it. Because he, cause he makes these fucking stories that are amazing. But they're psychedelic, uh, parliament, funkadelic. You know what I'm saying? Some real funk, man. And uh, he's been doing this for, you know, drawing them for for all, you know, forever. When he was a kid, he was drawing and shit. And I'm like, boy, that's bad. One day you're gonna make a book. Say that. And he did it. He's got several books now. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> now they call it Afrofuturism. I mean, it was it was not a thing when I was first drawing these things. Uh, but yeah, there's that. Um, and now we've just brought that whole thing to life. 
you know, in costume with our narrators, storytellers, right on. the band, <clears throat> costumes, the video production that plays the story on screen behind us as it happens. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Full production. Full production, yeah, and it's, it's happening. So you do eat a little bit of this yummy corn, smoke a little bit of this yummy vape cart, and then get some of my man Jason's stuff. What do you have here, Jay? So we do a whole plant extract, which is commonly known in the industry as an RSO, but that's not the only thing we do. We so do RSO, what is what Rick Simpson oil. Oh. Is what, uh, it's, it's pretty much what it's known So is it named after this guy, Rick Simpson, who yeah, created it or something? Yeah, he did a bunch of work with cancer patients. And oh. There's a good movement going for that. And Wow, look what we got here. I'm sorry, but keep, mm -hmm. keep going. They're bringing us something over here. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Got some food coming. But go that's ahead, what great. you're saying that's about it. Right. So go ahead, let's go. I'm listening. So we, we, we've kind of refined that process a little bit. We've taken it a step further. Did you see what he just did? I'm trying to get a play. What? Yeah, no, I, and then, so I try to get a plate, and then he just interrupts everything. Okay, no, so no plate for you. I'll call my mom. I'm not. They're not. They're not going to treat me like this again. I'm not. You know, this is not going to happen. Oh, it's so. It's, okay, so we're going to bless the food, and then uh, right quick, and then after we do that, I want him to because he was telling the story before Osiris. Just really interrupted us. You can bring our, our monies now. Okay. Oh, this is my. He's nice to me. He's nice to me. So I don't. I'm not nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, take the whole thing. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Oh. oh wow, we have shrimp. Okay, so you want to? Okay, this looks really good. See, this is my favorite part of the show because we get a chance to feed my guests and we all get to eat a little bit. So, but he was telling us a story before you really walked up and put this amazing oh, sorry. food. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, go ahead. Yeah, oh, well, let me bless the food real quick. I'll be blessed. <laughs> okay, so bless the food. Right, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food and bless those who made it possible in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now we can grow. And we can, you can finish oh, your story. What you're eating here? Oh, what are we eating? It's uh, a Alfredo. Uh -huh. and, uh, collard greens and smoked turkey wings. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good here. With uh, cheesy twisty bread. Mm -hmm. It don't look too good, but it tastes fantastic. It looks really good. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Basically, what it is is pizza dough rolled out, cheese, olive oil, cut in half, made into like a sandwich, and sliced. Here you eat. Slices. So take it up and twist it. Put it, on, put it in the oven. And that's it. So we eat on TV. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't mind if I do. Wow. Well, <laughs> on, get scroll. I get to smacking on TV, man. My mama told me watch the show last time. She said, baby, you gotta get me smacking. Well, I mean, my food is so good. Well, she just can't it's all the missing teeth I got in the back of my mouth. No, I'm just kidding. So as you were saying, this is really good, G. Mm -hmm. Osiris the chef, you've done it again. Right, thank you, I'll take my leave. <laughs> and a blank check. Thank you. And a blank back. check. I'll be back. And yeah, I want my check. So we'll see you later. And thank you so much. No worries. Let me know if you want seconds because I think I may be like one serving. Like, okay, so. Mm -mm -mm. Wonderful. Okay, so what you were saying so now? Where was I at? Uh, the guy who was named after. No, the Rick Simpson. So he, he had. Uh, Making this type of oil had helped out uh, a bunch of cancer patients and um, kind of built a little bit of a name for himself. But he was doing this, you know, pre legalization and kind of got pushed out of the United States. And, oh, wow. But his legacy has lived on enough to where everybody calls this type of oil Rick Simpson oil. Oh. I call it life oil. All right because it improves the quality of life. Yes, beautiful, I like that. Well, so it's, it's, it's um, people just always misconceive what, about weed. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. you know, because it's like, oh, you smoke weed, you get high. Even back in the day, you say, oh, it's taboo, you know, something bad, you know, you're a pothead or, you, you know, it, but it's it's deeper, way man. deeper. It's way deeper than that. I mean, it's, it's uh, it heals the body, you know? It helps the body with pain. I mean, people that have cancer, you know, that, that actually can take uh, cannabis and, but it has to be a certain type of cannabis, am I correct? Like, well, just I, not. I, I'll tell you, with, with the products that we're making, our goal is to provide a wide spectrum of cannabinoids okay. and a full spectrum extract. Full spectrum. So. What did it mean by full spectrum? Because for those out there that don't like me, like, what's full spectrum? Well, so because what will end up happening, uh, when you start stripping away the compounds in the plant, you start taking away the well, what they're now calling the ensemble effect. Mm. It used to be the entourage effect, and now we're moving over to ensemble for a reason I have no idea. <laughs> but the entourage effect basically is uh, the concept that the entire sum of the cannabinoid count that is in there is together greater than it's in the, the sum of its individual parts. Okay. So that's what you want to have. That because that makes it, make, it makes because sense. So because now you have all the connect cannabinoids that all the cannabinoids are working together. They're working together. together. They're working together. Exactly. Instead of taking pieces of it uh, or just having the you know, the A, and, and say, okay, this gets you high, but there's other parts that actually helps heal the body or help you with other uh, parts of your problem that your body may be having. It's actually also, for money, it's the interaction between your own body's endocannabinoid system. Oh, right. I mean, that's, that's really what the goal is, to interact with that mm -hmm. and help your body achieve a state of homeostasis. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So yep. That's why I love it. I mean, like, mm -hmm. yeah. I learn something every time I get up. I, I, I watch this show. I mean, I'm on the show, but I watch it and I learn things too. We carry that entire uh, mindset through all of the products that we make. Beautiful. Everything that we do is full spectrum. Beautiful. And it's all done with the alcohol. We don't use any butane. We don't use any color remediation. Well, if they would allow it, you guys should say it was organic. But so, but they why why is it in like in the cannabis or, or area they they're like you, you can't use organic. Yeah, organic comes down from FDA approval. But yeah, so you can't use the word organic because yeah, FDA has, we're yeah, not. Yeah, because it has, because it's not the federal Oh, so in six months or, or six years or, or whatever the time frame will be once right. the federal says, okay, it's federally available to everyone now. So now you can get it certified. By FDA, and then they'll turn and now say use the word organic. Right. I, see how they just take that word? Like, who gave them the right to do that? Uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> who, who gave them the yeah, right to take the word they and say, did. you know what, you can't use this word <laughs> on any of your products unless we say you can. Yeah. Sound like a driver's license test. You can't drive unless we can pass the test to get your license. Shit, I could drive before That's I had a license. I could drive before I had a license. Yeah. I drive pretty well. I didn't have any accidents or anything. So tell me about your product. Oh, well, um, I run two different companies. Okay. And we have products as well. I run a consulting firm, um, Nawe Consultancy, where we service equity um, in, in, entry level equity entrepreneurs to getting their business operating permits and going through the DCC approval in California. And then I also have a I'm also a cannabis entrepreneur, where I'm in the process of getting um, approved for distribution and non-storefront delivery, right. and as well as I'm um, in Sacramento. Right in on. Sacramento. And then I'm also a social equity entrepreneur. So we have a big program rolling out, a pilot program in Sacramento with some great partners in the education realm. And Del Paso Heights, we'll be partnering with them with our pilot program. 
and we'll also be expanding the pilot program through, um, through California and as the other states roll out, we'll be expanding as well. So that, that program will help um, people that are what minorities yes. or, or under people who come from the areas of underprivileged areas yes it will help individuals that have been affected by the war on drugs um, yeah. be trained in the cannabis industry and also learn um, um, a high level skills to enter the new cannabis industry with in the workforce development so they'll be trained to enter the jobs the new jobs that are being created within Sacramento within California and will branch off as the new states branch off oh, wow that's amazing because um, I've, I've talked to some guys that are in the equity program mm -hmm. and but what I found out was like they go through the equity program mm -hmm. they, they get first in line or whatever to mm -hmm. get licensing but they have some of the same issues because they don't have the finance correct so you can get the license but then you know that's 30,000 or whatever license you're going for and then the other thing is like because we're in the process of building our cultivation site mm -hmm. that we have here in Sacramento okay. um, but I need to talk to you because I'm not part of the equity program yeah. we're just like raising the fund from private investors yeah. and things like that but it, I mean it's up in the range of you know over a million dollars yeah, to I'm... build out a facility Correct. you know so it's like um, I'm, uh, even the people out there that uh, you know get the equity program and they're able to, to get first in line for licensing, then what do they do? Because they don't have the money to do the build out or correct. So, so do you help with that? So too? there's different opportunities when you're an equity entrepreneur, participant, applicant in the city of Sacramento as well as um, throughout the state of California. Some of the grants that come down from the state, mm -hmm. they're given to you or you apply for them in your local jurisdiction. So there is small financing that you're able to apply for and get, but of course we all know entering the cannabis industry, I have to have a private investor, which I have, and then I, and I raise my own funds, put that with some I mean, money I made for my own company, yeah. and then the city loans and the city grants, those are just, you know, supplemental Supplement things, thing. you know, so a lot of the um, participants I talk to and the equity entrepreneurs, that's one of their number one barriers. Is breaking through the financial. Right. So, so do, you, do you do you help with the grant writing or? Um, I do. Uh, we help with grant writing. We help with the CUP, the conditional use permit processing. Okay. We help with the um, business operating permit. We're also doing a mixer with a partner I have. We're um, we'll be holding a monthly mixer on Broadway in Sacramento to bring um, collectively equity entrepreneurs and the cannabis industry together, so people can be able to network and mix and crowdfund together and just kind of raise funds and bring awareness to each other. I was telling um, him, I mean, Jason earlier in natural act, extracts, you know, there's different opportunities for funding, for partnerships, for vertical integration within different companies and B2B businesses that people aren't aware of. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there should be about 25 to 50 new um, cannabis businesses next year from equity. Wonderful. From, so, you know, That's they need jobs, yeah. they have money to give, they have money to pay, they need, um, you know, building, just tons of different yeah. things in the business world. So yeah. I'm trying to bring everything together as well as start my own business as well. Well, I'm very proud of you, Thank sister. you, thank you. That's what we need. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank, <laughs> you. Hey. thank you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> This is a great show. This is one of the best shows, I gotta tell you. Just having you guys here, full of knowledge and, and, and the love for the cannabis industry. I mean, we kinda, I guess a couple shows ago, we might've got a little bit away from what we really are about here at the Yummy Lounge. Cause you know me, I love music, so we got to get in all these too much rappers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here, they're like lining up, wait, wait. Who you say entertainment? They line up down the street, man. They, they line up to kill. Oh, let me get on there. I'm a rapper. All right. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm a singer. I'm a dancer. I'm a plumber. What about me? Can I be on your show? I'm a plumber. Yeah, we're we'll a little plumber come on the show, right? We got plumbers for cannabis grows. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing about the cannabis industry. It's opening up just uh, so many opportunities for people. You know, job opportunities. You know, it's not just about getting high. It's about entrepreneurship and being in the ability to create something like this, you know? This was created from his mind and just, you know, like, hey, you know, now, now it's there, right? 
But in order to make that, he had to get licensed, he had to get a facility, okay. had to build the facility out, electrical, plumbing done, machines, you know, scientists, you have to have, it's a lot involved. It's, it's, it's like starting a laboratory, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it, it, yeah, it's a process, it definitely is. And I'm really, really pleased to be here and be able to share this, this, this opportunity to give these people out here who's watching us the opportunity to learn some things, you know, and see what we're about and that there was just a real community and really, and we're, we're real people, you know, about what we're doing. I think you're doing a wonderful, dope job. Dope job! <laughs> <laughs> dope job! <laughs> right? Right on. Thank you so, for having me here. Uh, thank so you, exciting. thank you guys for coming. So, you're very, very, so, so, very nice to come down here and, and uh, Dre, Yeah, Dre, um, kind of like you talked about your, your art, your, 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 your band and, and what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. So we want to, oh yeah, you know what, I'm tripping. I mean, you know, I ain't even smoke no yummy today, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I have, you know, <laughs> shit, I'm over here, well, what the hell was I going to say? But no, I wanted you to tell us about your, um. Your group, you know, your band and stuff that, you know, tell us about your shit that's going on with you. Okay, uh, the Funky Heroes, that's our group. Um, we come out and we perform the Universal Funk Opera. Um, again, it's based on the comic book series, Welcome to the Universe. And Welcome to the Universe was based on a true story. Uh, in other world, the encounters, I like to say. Um, that inspired a story um, that takes up four different books. And two of those books are published, and two of them are still on the table. Right so on. What I've done is taken the soundtrack, because each one has a soundtrack to it, taken the soundtrack and created a show from it, which portrays everything from the book, um, and the music goes along with each part of the story. You know, That's a dope. Particular song for each story or for each part of the story. Um, and again, the group comes out in costume, and I have, uh, I explained earlier, where the, the band itself, the Funky Heroes. The uh, Funky Heroes. That's the band that I I love that shit, that's dope. Like 1977 or so, that's a long time ago. You know, I was years old. And um, so now we, we are a real band. Uh, the costumes are designed, everything's done in-house. Um, the artwork yeah. is mine, the music is original songs written by myself. Uh, the costumes are done and designed by my wife, Lisa Lynn Preston, um, who also participates in the band. She plays saxophone, she drums, and she wow. dances on stilts and sings. Dances oh, on wow. stilts. In that video? Yeah. Oh, cool. Multi, multi-talented. And, um, Anyway, so that's that's what we're doing, uh, and our theme is a lot of times people like to say Afrofuturism. Uh, when I came into this, it wasn't about Afrofuturism; it was about the story itself, and um, me needing to communicate that story to the masses. Um, I felt it was kind of an important thing. Um, some people may or may not really subscribe to the idea of otherworldly life, extraterrestrial life, um, what I do, um, I have my own means of saying I have proof, um, and it just doesn't, to me, it just doesn't make sense to feel like with so many billions and trillions of stars and galaxies and planets out that we're just barely discovering that we are the only species that can do what we do, that look like we look like. Um, so. Anyhow, the music that I coined the phrase is called Universal Funk, therefore Universal Funk Opera. The acronym for that is UFO, Universal Funk Opera. Opera, that's tight. That's, that's tight. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I, remember, that. I remember when we were kids, like I've known these guys, I mean, since, I don't know, seventh grade. Something like that. Yeah, we were kids, man. And we grew up in Oakland uh, around Lake Merritt. Mm. And, um, I used to go because his brother Taj plays guitar. He plays drum, right? And Taj is an amazing guitarist. I mean, he's, he's in New York now. And he's done work with many, many people. Sheila, he, all kinds of, I mean, they've, they've been working for years. When he was a kid, he used to draw. 
And I used to go up, you know, to a mom's house and their house and, and watch them and just look at some of his drawings and stuff. And I'm like, dude, you're gonna fucking make a book. This shit is dope. We just fucking, like the whole story, like the, the cartoon, the characters. And like he was doing this, you know, I don't want this girls how old we are, but oh, I don't care. Over 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking fucking 30 years, dude. Like, come on now. You know, there's probably people watching this show that they ain't not even 30 yet. You know what I'm saying? Right. So before you were born, young man and young lady, we were t hanging out. Before your parents knew each other. Yeah, before your parents. <laughs> before they knew each other, yeah. Matter of fact, we were probably your parents' age. <laughs> so, but like, I mean, I, I, I used to you're so, your talent is you're so blessed with talent in many, many areas, bro. You know, and I've had so many, um, we always come together in this, I don't know, it's kind of strange, it's like, you know, a, a period of time would go by and we, you know, don't see each other, don't talk, just, you know, but, but, but then we come back, you know, and then a period of time would go by and come back, and now here we are again, and, and look what he's got going on, man, just, just this whole UFO shit is <laughs> dope. You know, uh, we, we show some of the some of the footage on the show so people get a chance to see that. You know, I wanted to have the, the group come because like we like to have live performance here. But when I when I see yeah man, come on bro, bring the group over. We gonna have a performance. I said yeah, who, what you got? How many pieces you guys? Oh, I got twelve pieces. I said wait wait 12, 12 people. Yeah yeah twelve people. We gonna have twelve people. I said so your whole kit, your drum kit, yeah. Yeah, you see our stage, like where you guys interview. That's all the space we have. Could you imagine a drum would take up the whole damn spot? <laughs> His drum kit would just My take drum up set alone, the yeah. drum set alone. <laughs> so we had to get your your wife on the stilks, and she had to bend over a little bit. And then we'll have to stick the other guy around the curtain. I I, I don't think it's gonna work. So no. we'll get a bigger place. Oh yeah, uh, that's what we're gonna I'll do. We're gonna we're gonna get a bigger place with a big stage and. Do this shit right. Give it to you. Yeah, actually, you know what? We did something in LA, but we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and take this time to thank everyone out there for watching our show, right? And this is what we're gonna tell them: we want everyone out there to stay, stay yummy. yummy.